The top stories tonight in Y News. A man who tested positive for COVID-19 isolates himself in his own car and later dies. General Diaz police chief relieved from his post over the death of a curfew violator. The Food and Drug Administration has approved the use of coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine on senior citizens. The Department of Budget and Management proposes austerity measures to help funding via Nihan 3. The Department of Foreign Affairs has fired off another diplomatic protest over the continued presence of Chinese vessels at the Julian Felipe Reef in the West Philippine Sea. And the government will impose a suggested retail price on imported pork starting Friday. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan Avenue in Kazan City. Today is Wednesday, April 7, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, a man who tested positive for COVID-19 isolates himself in his own car and later died. Meanwhile, a private hospital group still awaits the government's manpower assistance amid the shortage of isolation and ICU beds for COVID-19 patients. Nel Maribohok has this report. Laili Pareño is a jolly person as what his friends describes him, a family man and responsible father. His longtime friend Aris Ilagan told UNTV News about Laili's fate, a COVID-19 positive. He first knew his friend's condition after he talked to him over the phone last March 26. March 26, umaga, tumawag siya sa akin. Out of the blue. So, sa nagkamustahan kami, tapos inamin niya na may COVID siya. So, nagulat ako. Sabi ko, kamusta ka na? Tapos hindi ba niya usapan, bro? The following day, Ilagan received a text message from Pareño asking for a load. The next day, yung morning, I received a text from him, text message. Sabi niya, bro, pwede mo akong padala ng load? Wala lang ako mabilan dito. So, iniisip ko, nasa room na siya, nasa room na isolated na hindi siya makalabas. So, sabi ko, yun lang ba? Yun lang ba kailangan mo? Oh, yun lang, sapat na yun. Sabi niya, malaking tulog na yun. So, inadala ko. Bago, siyempre, bago kami mag-end ng uh, usa, ng text, sabi ko, kamusta ka na? Ayos naman kalagaya mo dyan. Pa hindi na sumagot. And eventually, on March 28, a common friend told him that Pareño had already passed away due to COVID. He got an information that his friend Pareño was found inside his car with engine on and parked somewhere in Camp Crame area. According to Ilagan, his friend's car was full of goods, an indication that he was prepared to isolate himself in his car. Kung nalaman niyang passive goods siya, nag-stay na lang siya sa loob ng controller, nag-inbox siya ng pagkain, may mga tubig. Nakita siya ng, I don't know kung office mate niya or uh, camp security na ano, nandun sa loob ng kotse, hinang-hinana. That's when they called an ambulance. After they pulled out him from the vehicle, he was immediately brought to hospital. Ilagan said Pareño might have known that hospitals were already full and no longer attempted to go and choose to stay in his car for around three days. According to the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines, aside from government hospitals, their hospitals outside National Capital Region are nearing in its full capacity. Right now, especially mga private hospitals, talagang puluan, ano? not only sa National Capital Region, pati po sa Region 4, Region 3, at saka yung pong Region 2, ganun na rin, halos sa uh, Punoan. 
lalo na yung uh, CAR, uh, Cordillera. No? According to PHAP President Dr. Jose Grano, they are still waiting for the government's manpower assistance. Right now, as far as I know, wala pa. No? Ang uh, nakikita natin right now na pinadala ng government ay dun sa mga public hospitals, no? government hospitals. Uh, expand sila. Pero right now, sa mga private, uh, I'm not sure, wala pa kung nagsabi sa amin na nagpadala sila ng uh, augmentation personnel. You know, kasi kung uh, ang mga private hospitals, meron naman kasi kaming uh, mga beds available. Ang problem is yung personnel. Department of Health data last April 6 shows that 82% of ICU beds and 71% of isolation beds in National Capital Region was already utilized. In connection with this, Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said there are about 100 doctors and nurses from Cebu that are scheduled to arrive in Metro Manila to help in private and government hospitals. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A group of doctors appeals to convert hotels to COVID-19 treatment facilities, but hotel owners refuse to do so. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why, live. Yes, Asher. Earlier, the Philippine Hotel Owners Association Incorporated explains that all of their 78 hotels are already fully occupied with overseas Filipino workers being isolated upon arrival as a measure against COVID-19 transmission. The group's president, Arthur Lopez, said they have or they even experienced shortage in bed allocation for the returning Filipino migrant workers. As much as we would like to help them, all our hotels are taken already by uh, OFW uh, OWA. So we're hosting a lot of uh, OFWs that are, you know, coming back to the country, okay? So they're they, when they arrive, they're quarantined there for a while and then uh, they move on to their provinces. The Department of Tourism, however, expressed its gratitude to hotels continuously serving as quarantine facilities, which now reach to as much as about 2,500 rooms. The Department of Public Works and Highways, on the other hand, assures the public in providing more COVID-19 facilities across the country. These include more modular hospitals with a total of about 300 bed capacity, which may admit moderate to critical COVID-19 patients, where most are expected to open next month. These are on top of the newly opened Kazan Institute offsite modular hospitals, which opened yesterday, and two more modular units that the DPWH have completed constructing. More quarantine facilities for mild cases with about three to 4,000 bed capacity are also being constructed by the agency. Here's Isolation Czar and DPWH Secretary Mark Villar. Plano na kami uh, magtayo pa ng additional quarantine facilities and ICU facilities. Uh, dahil sa nakikita natin ngayon, kailangan pa madagdagan ng ICU capacity natin. Meanwhile, Senator Christopher Bongo, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Health, said volunteer healthcare workers from other regions with low COVID-19 cases will be temporarily deployed to augment health facilities in Metro Manila that are overwhelmed with the soaring number of patients who contracted the disease. Harleen? Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. Meanwhile, the chief of police of General Tria City in Cavite was relieved from his post over the death of a 28-year-old man who was accosted and required to do community work for violating enhanced community quarantine guidelines. Lea Ilagan reports why. The PNP Internal Affairs Service is conducting a pre-charge investigation in connection into the theft of Darren Peñaridondo. Peña Redondo died after being forced to perform a body pumping exercise 300 times before being freed. He was arrested for violating quarantine rules. According to PNP Internal Affairs Service Inspector General Attorney Alfigar Triambolo, 
Seven policemen involved in the incident were given one week to submit their affidavit, including the chief of police of General Trias City. Isa man yan sa aming uh, motor proprio investigation, uh -uh. yung mga nasa posto din ng police, kung mayroong mga human rights violation, ay kami nag-investiga. Uh, uh, PNP spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Ildebrandi Osano confirmed that the Chief of Police of General Trias, Police Lieutenant Colonel Marlo Solero, and two more police officers, Police Corporal Jerome Vivar and Police Corporal Kenneth Mercene, had been relieved from their post pending the investigation. Six months suspension for dismissal from the service. Ang range ng penalty ng uh... Uh, serious na kapabayaan na nagresulta ng pagkamatay ng isang uh, tao. General Osana earlier said, Chief PNP Debold Sinas is not in favor of arresting quarantine violators. He said that it is sufficient to give them a warning or fine based on the ordinance of local government units or community service as an alternative. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, news and rescue we serve the people we give glory to god president rodrigo duterte will not deliver his usual talk to the people this week presidential spokesperson harry roque said president duterte's public address has been rescheduled to next week meanwhile senator christopher lawrence bongo said in a statement that the speech was postponed to avoid putting the president at risk due to the reported COVID-19 cases in the Presidential Security Group, or PSG. The lawmaker assured there is nothing to worry about when it comes to the health of the chief executive, and he keeps working in Malacanya. A lawmaker has urged President Duterte to call for a special session to immediately pass a new emergency measure to help vulnerable households in coping with stricter quarantine restrictions. However, the budget department proposes cutting back some government programs while it searches for available funds for the proposed stimulus package. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drenon believes President Duterte should now call for a special session for the passage of the proposed third Bayanihan law. This is to extend emergency subsidies to families who are most affected by the recent re-imposition of enhanced community quarantine and to replenish the government's pandemic war chest. Drenon is seeking for the realignment of some items in the national budget such as the 19 billion peso insurgency fund and the 9.5 billion peso confidential and intelligence funds. For his part, Senate President Vicente Soto III said he is open for a special session unless the Department of Budget and Management can find other sources available. Congress is in session break until May 17. However, DBM Secretary Wendell Avisado says they are still looking for available funds that can be tapped to help finance the Bayanihan 3. While they are open to ask Congress for a supplemental budget, the DBM has proposed to the President an executive order which aims to reduce the spending of government agencies on non-essential activities such as travel and seminar expenses. Avisado says they may also look into projects that have yet to be implemented without affecting the government's Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. Most of it, as a matter of fact, will really be taken from MOOE, mm -hmm. uh, the non-essential uh, items and, uh, and programs uh, that may now be rechanneled to address the uh, continuing uh, effects of the pandemic. We're trying to, to really look at uh, what would be the more appropriate and or approximate uh, amount that uh, the Department of Finance can raise and those that we can also uh, well gather from uh, the available funds of the various national government agencies. Various emergency measures have been filed in both chambers of Congress, such as the over 400 billion peso Bayanihan 3 and the 335 billion peso expanded stimulus package. The budget secretary adds there is a need to revert the NCR Plus bubble to modified ECQ, noting that the country cannot afford to go on another ECQ extension. The other um, 
dimension of this that perhaps needs uh, to be looked into is what about the other regions who may yet also experience uh, the, the same kind of uh, reclassification later on. They cannot go but really just come up with certain decisions that will be both beneficial to our health and economy. Uh, there has to be a balance somehow. The budget department has already disbursed 3.4 trillion pesos from the 4.5 trillion peso national budget for this year. Jorlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. More local government units in Metro Manila have begun distributing the national government financial assistance to their citizens today. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior local government warns local officials against using financial aid for early campaigning. Dante Amento tells us why. Local government units in NCR Plus, upon receipt of financial assistance from the national government, have been given 15 days to distribute the cash aid to their constituents and 30 days if in kind. Cities such as Paranaque, Caloocan, Navotas, and Quezon City have started distributing the assistance today. Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD Secretary Rolando Bautista says based on reports they received LGUs preferred to give in cash. Una una, uh, mas mabilis ibigay yung uh, cash amount kaysa sa pag in kind kasi alam naman natin meron meron mga procurement system yan, may mga proseso. Kaya ayun yung siguro nagpudyok sa mga ating mga LGU na mag-opt na lang sa pagbibigay in terms of cash. The process is fast as compared to the social amelioration rollout last year. Mas mabilis to. Kasi doon marami pang ano eh, maraming tao kayong kakonti na. Dabi sa parang natin eh, mami kami maghapon doon eh. Mas patro. Ngayon, mas mabilis. Kasi yung nakaraan, medyo ilang buwan pa bago makaanay, makakarating sa amin yung mga ayun. In Manila, some 380,000 families will be given a cash aid through the 1.5 billion pesos allotted fund. Each family will receive 4,000 pesos. Ang ginawa po natin per family dahil mahirap pong hanapin yung 1,500,000 na populasyon. At walang data ang national government nun. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG warns a new local politicians or officials not to use the government assistance for their personal interest or early campaigning such as putting their names or picture on the aid. The ILG will file appropriate criminal or administrative charges against those individuals who will be found violating this order. Kung maalala po ng ating mga kababayan, last year sa social amelioration program, mga dalawang daan po yan ang ating finailan ng kasong kriminal sa buong bansa. So, uulitin lang po natin yung ginawa natin last year at uh, babantayin lang po natin yung pera ng bayan. Local officials who will insert ghost beneficiaries will also be charged. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Philippines recorded 6,414 new coronavirus infections today. The Department of Health said there are currently 158,701 patients being treated for COVID-19 nationwide. Of these patients, 97.5% have mild symptoms, 1.2% are asymptomatic, 0.5% are critical, 0.5% are severe, and 0.30% are in moderate condition. It was also shown that the COVID-19 related deaths in the country breached the 14,000 mark. The DOH reported 242 new fatalities. This brought the death toll to 
14,059 persons. Meanwhile, 163 more patients have recovered, raising the recovery count to 646,404. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases since the pandemic hit the Philippines stood at 819,164. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has approved the use of coronavac COVID-19 vaccine developed by China's Sinovac Biotech on senior citizens. The FDA's announcement comes after the vaccine expert panel recommended the administration of Sinovac's vaccine on the elderly. Domingo, however, emphasized that the vaccination of senior citizens using coronavac should strictly be preceded by careful evaluation of the person's health status and exposure risk. In a separate statement, the Department of Health further stressed that while the current efficacy data for senior citizens from phase three trials is insufficient, the benefits of using the vaccine for this particular group outweigh its risks, and more scientific data on the use of senior citizens may soon become available. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte on Wednesday confirmed she took a flight to Singapore for personal health management. In a statement, Duterte said she is on leave from April 6 to 10. Local, local media earlier reported about the mayor taking a trip to Singapore on Tuesday afternoon. She was said to be accompanied by one of her children, a nanny, and a member of the presidential security group. The Philippines has filed its third diplomatic protest against China for the continued stay of Chinese vessels at Julian Felipe Reef in the West Philippine Sea. Rosa Lecoz explains why. Tensions in the West Philippine Sea remain amid the continued presence of Chinese vessels at Julian Felipe Reef, a part of our exclusive economic zone. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Luxin revealed in his tweet today he is firing another diplomatic protest and will file one every day until the last ship is gone. This is in accordance with a statement released by the Department of Foreign Affairs earlier when it reiterated the demand of Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana that China immediately withdraw its fishing vessels in the vicinity of Julian Felipe Reef. For every day of delay, the Republic of the Philippines will lodge a diplomatic protest. This is the third diplomatic protest lodged by the Philippines regarding the maritime incident. It is the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea which revealed the presence of more than 200 Chinese vessels in the reef located 175 nautical miles from Palawan. However, Senator Panfilo Lacson believes diplomatic protest may not be too helpful anymore as China continues to ignore it. Instead, the Philippines and its allies in the Asia-Pacific and the West should show they can bind together to maintain a balance of power in the region, including the West Philippine Sea. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The government will impose a suggested retail price on imported pork starting April 9. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The price ceiling on pork and chicken will end on April 8, and as part of the government's effort to stabilize food price, a suggested retail price on imported pork will take effect. Starting April 9, the SRP for imported pork casin is 270 per kilogram, while the imported pork liempo is 350 per kilogram. This is after the Departments of Agriculture and Trade and Industry factored in all the cost and margins before it will be sold to consumers. As a sanitary measure, the government will require the proper packaging. The DA through the NMIS, the National Meat Inspection Service, will require importers to package their pork into, uh, of course, those two uh, categories, Yempo or Kasim, into saleable packages of one kilo or 500 grams. DA has allotted 45 billion pesos for the distribution of freezers to vendors. A monitoring team will also be formed to make sure that the implementation of SRP are being observed. DTI hopes that with this intervention, pork prices in the country will become stable. I think 320 to 350 hopefully would be the ideal price uh, moving forward and even maybe the expected supply 
asahan po natin na dyan po iikot ang presyo at in a, in a way medyo mas estable na. But pork prices in different markets in Metro Manila ranges from 350 to as high as 410 pesos per kilogram. Laban consumer prefers the implementation of the price ceiling instead of the SRP. The group also urges the government to release the result of the investigation on the alleged manipulation of pork prices. But the Department of Agriculture said that they will focus more on other measures such as hog repopulation, allowing additional import and lowering tariff. Yung dati, yung price cap uh, will not solve the problem. Ang bottom line pa rin ay supply. Price capping is just one of the measures. So to stabilize prices talaga, you have to complete those other measures to be in place. But until their recommendation is approved, DA will continue supporting the transportation of hogs from different provinces to Metro Manila. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Pets are known to be stress relievers, especially during the pandemic. But they could also be stressed out as their owners. Meanwhile, the Philippine Animal Welfare Society clarifies that there are no studies yet claiming that COVID-19 virus can be transmitted by cats and dogs to humans. Marvin Calas explains why. Pets are in demand during the pandemic as they serve as happy pills or stress relievers amid the ongoing health crisis. But studies claims that stress could also be felt by pets depending on the pet owner's condition and treatment. Anxieties felt by the owners can be radiated by their pets. There are studies actually that uh, show that pets pick up on our stress then. Uh, so we must be very careful also about stressing our pets out too much. Sabi nga nila pag, um, pag bagong taon, di ba, nagpuputukan and then natatalanta, the more that you try to fuss over your pet, the more na napipick up ng pet that something's not normal. So you try to act normally. Renessa Tuito, a pet lover for over 30 years, says a balanced and systematic treatment towards pets can help eliminate stress. Yung daily activity nila dapat meron. Halimbawa, may walking kayo or may parang ano lang, nag-groom lang kayo, suklay-suklay, then kinakausa po. Yun na re na yung ano nila, yung stress nila, pati rin tayo na mga pet owners. Paus also clarified that there are no studies yet that concludes pets, such as cats and dogs, can transmit COVID-19 virus to humans. This is due to several reports received by the group that relatives of deceased COVID-19 patients are troubled to adopt their pets in fear of contracting the virus. Uh, pets cannot pass on COVID to you. Um, you can pass it on to your pet. There are studies uh, that the pets can get uh, COVID from humans, but they cannot pass on the COVID virus to uh, other human beings. So um, just the regular nap, uh, wipe down the pet or wash uh, or bathe yung pet before you take it in. Uh, Paus added that having pets is a lifetime commitment and irresponsibility. Pets are also considered heroes as they contribute to a positive emotional health, comfort, and helps alleviate depression. Marvin Callas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad. Scientists forecast Brazil to surpass United States coronavirus death toll as catastrophic increase of infections and deaths are recorded in the country. Early Briones reports. There is a spike of deaths in recent weeks across Brazil, as recorded by health authorities, with mortality reaching 4,211 in a day on Tuesday, and a total number of COVID cases surpassing the 13 million mark. This surge is due to the spread of Brazil variant, which is believed to be more contagious as the original one, and the insufficient social distancing efforts in the country. According to the Health Ministry, the overall COVID-19 deaths of Brazil is over 337,000, which is falling just behind U.S. with around 570,000 killed. 
With the outbreak overwhelming the country's health system, Brazil could surpass the death toll of U.S. despite having fewer population. Miguel Angelo Nicolelis, a Brazilian doctor and professor at Duke University, compared the current COVID crisis in Brazil to the Fukushima nuclear disaster as the situation is out of control. Despite the surge of coronavirus cases, Brazilian officials are resolute that Brazil can go back to normal soon. In a statement of Economy Minister Paulo Guedes, he said that the country will be back in two or three months' time. However, experts predict that as soon as next week, Brazil may break the record of U.S. weekly COVID deaths and forecasting it could reach 563,000 fatality by July. Meanwhile, President Jair Bolsonaro, who was pushed back against masks and lockdowns, has shifted his stand and is now promoting vaccinations. Early Briones, UN TV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. One in three COVID-19 survivors have an increased risk of developing mental health and neurological conditions in the six months after an infection, according to latest research. Marvin Dolphin will give us the detail live. Go ahead, Marvi. Where they analyzed the Trinet X electronic health records of 236,379 patients over 10 years old infected last year, who were mostly from the U.S. The report was peer-reviewed and published in the Lancet Psychiatry Journal and is said to be the first large-scale research to compare the risk to other illnesses, including influenza. Taking into account characteristics such as age, sex, ethnicity, and existing health conditions, there was a 44% greater risk of mental health problems after COVID-19 than after the flu. Overall, the estimated incidence of being diagnosed with a mental or neurological disorder following COVID-19 infection was 34%, and such risks were greatest in, but not limited to, patients who had severe COVID-19. For 13% of these people, it was their first recorded psychiatric or neurological diagnosis. The most common diagnoses after catching SARS-CoV-2 were anxiety, depression, mood disorders, substance misuse, and insomnia. Post-COVID cases of brain hemorrhage, stroke, dementia, and other cognitive disturbances were rarer, but they were still significant. The study was not able to determine the biological or psychological mechanisms involved, but co-author Dr. Max Tackett said that urgent in-depth research as well as more resources are needed to address the full range of implications. Lead author Paul Harrison is particularly concerned given the scale of the pandemic, and many of these conditions are chronic or recurrent, and so he hopes that findings can aid service planning. Modeling has indicated there will be a 30% increase in demand for care after COVID-19, and health experts warn that we can anticipate that the impact of COVID-19 could be with us for many years. Back to you, Kath. All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. A trial of AstraZeneca vaccine on children was halted in the United Kingdom. Nina Bascon reports why. The planned AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccination trials on children and teenagers have been paused. It was announced by the University of Oxford on Tuesday as they await relaunch the study and gather more information from Britain's Medicines and Health Products Regulatory Agency or MHRA regarding the blood clotting cases seen in adults. This hits the AstraZeneca promise of distributing the vaccine across the European Union, as the MHRA released that 30 reports of 18 million vaccinations having side effects of blood clotting with seven facing mortality. No conclusions regarding these cases have been led to, said by the European Medicines Agency. Regardless of these cases, no implementation of restrictions with the use of AstraZeneca vaccines in the UK have taken place, as said by the World Health Organization that the advantage of the vaccine against COVID-19 overpowered the risks. University of Bristol's professor of pediatrics, Adam Finn, emphasizes the benefits of having the vaccine and warns the greater risks of not being vaccinated. The MHRA recommends parents and children to seek information regarding the vaccine if they have any questions and concerns. 
Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind news, behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Tumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. The Members Church of God International visited a community of persons with disability in San Juan City. J.P. Nunez tells the story why. Of the more than 300 persons with disabilities in Barangay Bati, San Juan City, about 100 are indigent. They were the recipient of the feeding program of the Members Church of God International or MCGI. According to a barangay official, the feeding program is timely amid the enhanced community quarantine and beneficial not only to the PWDs but also to their other constituents. Talagang napakahalaga kasi ngayon nasa ECQ rin tayo, hindi rin lahat sila ay pumapasok or dun sa sa kanilang ba sa isa kanilang um, family hindi lahat ay pumapasok kung nagkakaroon ng income sa ngayong panahon kasi hindi naman lahat ay nasa essential um, work so kumbaga yung yung free lunch na yon hindi natin masasabi kung para sa ating miyembro lang or pwede ng pagsaluhan dahil ma malaking serving kasi yung naibigay ninyong free lunch so baka paghatian na siya ng buong pamilya the free lunch consists of chop suey, pork, cooked rice, and water. Masarap. So, baka meron pa, ha? <laughs> Dala pa kayo. Masarap yung gulay. Tama-tama yung timpla. Hindi maasim, hindi maalat, hindi matabang. Ako, maraming maraming salamat po. Hindi namin alam kung paano namin ibabalik sa inyo. <laughs> One of the recipients is Joel Ronolo, a stroke patient he has no family of his own. He only depends on his neighbor's assistance day by day. He is thankful that MCGI came today. Masarap. Buti din. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat sa AMPI. Uh, Palangalian. On the other hand, Cake Abelo, a widow and lives on her own, has experienced leg amputation due to diabetes in 2019. In order to make ends meet, she expects only her PWD monthly benefits, which do not suffice for her needs most of the time. A single meal from the MCGI is a big help, she said. So one and a half years na rin akong mag-isa kasama yung aso. So right now, I'm living sa monthly SSS ko sa disability. Kapag nasa-short yon. Hindi, meron dumarating yan, kayo dumating. <laughs> Parang ganon, hindi ka na siya winawari at all. The feeding program in Barangay Batis is part of the week-long charitable activities of the Members Church of God International as part of the Legacy Continues. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The members of a born-again church in Japan who were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic also benefit from the charity works of the Members Church of God International. Nerisa Dando reports. One of the teachings of Members Church of God International, as we have learned from the Bible, is not to discriminate people. Brother Eli Soriano constantly reminded us to respect and show love to others regardless of their race, gender, political affiliation, and religion. In Shizuoka, Japan, a Born Again Alliance Church, through their pastor Mr. Reynaldo Kalipayan, received 40 food packs from MCGI Global Feeding Program. According to Mr. Kalipayan, some of the members of his church lost jobs due to the pandemic but he remained thankful because no one got infected by COVID-19. 
Actually, meron ding nawala ng trabaho. Meron ding mga nawala din sa paglilingkod. Wala namang na-infect ng COVID. Mr. Talipayan also shared that he is a listener of Brother Ellie's teaching on YouTube and is aware of the many good works MCGI has been doing. Actually, uh... I've heard sa ministry ng MCGI kasi nakikinig din ako kay Brother Elis sa YouTube and naririnig ko na yung mga ministries kasi sinasabi naman but first time here, sana magpatuloy <laughs> maganda po ito kasi ito ang hindi uh, lang tayo for spiritual but also we are here for uh, physical also, yan naman ang gusto rin ni Brother Elis, nagpapaaral nag, kung ano yung ginagawa niya, di ba? Despite religious differences, Mr. Kalipayan is thankful for the blessings he and his church members received and candidly greeted Brother Ellie a happy birthday. Kaya, maraming salamat. To God be the glory. Happy birthday, Brother Ellie! In total, MCGI in Jezaoka and Nagoya distributed 200 food packs not only to Filipinos but also to homeless Japanese. Brother Ellie's legacy to do good to all men will continue not only in the Philippines but also in other parts of the world. Nirisa Dando, UNTV News and Rescue, Japan. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Those are the reasons behind the news, April 7, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Amangelo Casta III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people, we give glory to God. <laughs>